Okay, before we can get started, we need to get a GraphQL endpoint. So let's do that by going to the Get Started page, scrolling to the bottom, and clicking the Get GraphQL endpoint. We need to authorize it via GitHub. And once we have, we should now get a GraphQL endpoint at the bottom of the page. Notice also that the GraphQL dashboard buttons pop up on the left hand corner. In addition to our endpoint, which is displayed over here, we now have some instructions on how to start. Okay, let's get started by setting up our Pokedex app. So in order to get started, we'll need to have Git installed, and also Node.js and NPM. You can visit the Get Started page for more information on those. If you've already got that, or once you finish installing, the next thing to do is clone the application. So I'm going to clone it to my desktop for now. Once we've cloned it, let's cd into that directory. And check out to the step one branch. At this point, it's worth noting that this tutorial is broken down into several steps and each step corresponds to a branch in this repo that we just cloned. It's worth noting at this point that we're in the step one branch now, but later on as this tutorial develops and we reach higher and higher steps, we can check out to the branch corresponding to that step. Those branches will have the code that's appropriate to that step. Additionally, each step also has a solutions branch. So for example, later on, when we're in step four and we're stuck on something, we can check out to the step four solutions branch in order to see what the finished code looks like. Unfortunately, it isn't as straightforward as it sounds because right now what we have to do is the following. So let's open this up in a text editor. I'm going to use Atom for now. So if we open up package.json, we can see that there is this GraphQL request URL field over here. Field that's kind of just stubbed out at the moment. Also, in src and index.js, we have a similar, a similar stubbed out URL. We need to replace these two URLs with the URL provided. So if we go back to the learn relay page and we copy this GraphQL endpoint that we were provided with, and we paste this into the appropriate part of index.js and also package.json, This enables Relay to communicate successfully to the GraphQL server. The URL in the package.json section essentially helps Relay to actually compose these queries and send them off. And the URL in index.js, where it says new relay.default network layer, this is essentially telling Relay that this is where you communicate with. What's not so straightforward at the moment is whenever we check out to a new branch, we always have to make sure that we copy and paste these endpoints back into these files. An easy way to think of that is when we open up GraphQL server, we can see this, the API endpoint is actually located over there. So we can just click that button to get it copied and paste it straight in. But it's good to keep this in mind for now. We hope to rectify this in a later version of this tutorial series. Great. Now that we've copied those endpoints in, let's run npm install to get all our dependencies. Great, now that all the dependencies have finished downloading, we can run npm start and open our page to localhost 3000 and we should see the following page. This means that we've configured everything correctly and we're ready to start the tutorial. Now, it's worth going through the directory structure for the moment and what files are which. We can see we have this source directory with views, index.css and index.js. 
index.js is really the entry point to our app. That's where we do this React DOM render with a router. So if we look at the imports, we have React Relay, which provides us with this relay object that we use throughout this series, starting with relay.inject network layer. We also have React Router Relay, which is React Router, but for Relay. Down here we've defined viewer queries. A lot of the queries in Relay are often wrapped with the so-called viewer queries object. So we've defined it once here in order to make it easier for us to use in future. Finally, we've set up router and we set up one route which matches our home path to list page, which is this list page component over here. So I am a React app is what we are seeing. Finally, let's check out to another branch just so you can see what it looks like. So I'll go back into my terminal and I'll quit this process and I'll check out to another branch. I'm presented with the following error. Your local changes to the following files will be overwritten by the checkout. This is fine. We can either stash or just get rid of the changes we've made. In this case, I'm going to get rid of the changes that we've just made so I can show you the whole copying and pasting process. So I'm going to put the minus F flag, which discards my changes. And now I'm in step three. So you can see some extra code's been added. Unfortunately, if we open up package.json, we can see that this URL is no longer filled out in the way that we used to have before. And likewise, if we look at index.js, we have the same issue. So we'll have to go back into Learn Relay, open up the GraphQL server dashboard, copy the URL, quickly paste it back in. Once we've saved this, we can then run npm start again. And refreshing the page, we see it's not working. Finally, if I quit this process again, we're in the branch step three at the moment. But if we ever get stuck, we can go into the step three solutions branch. I'll show you that now. And we can see that we're at the step three solutions branch. And this will contain the solutions for this step. So if you ever get stuck, it's worth doing this. Anyway, this concludes the get started tutorial and see you in the queries.